Hello and welcome to the first game of Richard Rapport. So Rapport is now ranked as number 13 in the world and he's very well known for, for his uh, original attacking style. Usually his games are super complicated. He also makes strange looking moves and but somehow he always comes out as winner or at least very often he comes out as winner. And this first game of his is going to be absolutely no different. It's going to be a Sicilian dragon. Rapport is with the black pieces. And there will be pieces sacrificed the left and right. So it's a very interesting game. So let's kind of go there. So Rapport uh, is 10 years old at this time. It, it was played in 2006. And it was also played in, in, in Hungary, where he was born. Um, and his opponent is uh, Attila Kövesi. So let's go directly to the game. White plays e4, and we are going to have the Sicilian dragon. So c5, knight f3, d6, d4, takes, takes, knight f6, knight c3, and g6, and this is the so-called dragon. And here white usually has two different styles of playing, just playing sort of positionally and go with short castle, or playing a more tactical style, going after the opponent king and castle long. We will see that white pretty much mixes the two strategies here. So comes bishop e2, bishop g7, bishop e3, castle, and comes now h4. So normal would be just castle here with, uh, with white, but that's not uh, that's not what white does here. <clears throat> he goes after the king with h4. Plays of court h5, taking here, opening up the h file, and then checkmate black. But of course Rapport knows how to react to this. Uh, this dragon was his favorite opening for a very long time. He plays the move h5, stopping white from pushing forward. Now comes queen d3, which is actually quite a quite a bad move because this queen will be easily attacked later on. So now comes knight c6 castle, and after knight e5, they see that this uh, knight is sorry the, the queen is already hit by the knight, so has to move again. Comes bishop d7, f3. All white plan is to try to play g4 and then go on with the with the attack. Rook c8, rook g1, and here comes the first. Uh, Sort of rapport move probably from the history. Black immediately sacrificed the exchange queen, rook takes c3. The point of this move is that if you take black with the queen, which happened in the game, then black can play the move d5. And the idea is that if you take on d5, then the knight can take back, and these knights are pretty nice. Black can eliminate this bishop, and uh, will try to attack the, the, the white king. But of course the d5 white does not have to take. So the best option here would be just to move your knight, knight b3, attack this knight, and then uh, if the knight moves then just play e5, closing the position and uh, hanging on to your, your exchange. But this is not what white did, white also was uh, in the mood of attacking and trying to checkmate the opponent, so come g4. d takes e, takes on h5, and knight d5 comes now, so it goes the queen and uh, the bishop, queen d2, and Rapport eliminates the opponent's uh, dark squared bishop. And here comes queen b6. And we can see that these type of positions could easily be from a game of Rapport when Rapport is already a grandmaster. There is huge complication, black is dumb material, but he has very active pieces. So we can see that this, this pin is quite, uh, quite uncomfortable on this diagonal. And there is this dark squared bishop more or less unmatched on the long diagonal. So here white plays the move queen takes e4. And here black has uh, actually two good looking options. So here actually I invite you to stop the video and try to figure out what's going on. So we can see that there is this, this attack against the d4 knight and more importantly there is this queen eyeballing the the b2 pawn and there's also this bishop on the long diagonal. So there is two ways that we can try to open up this, uh, this uh, long diagonal. So black can play the move knight takes f3. And the point is, if you, if you take with the queen, there is of course bishop takes d4, hitting the pawn, hitting the rook, and white is in huge trouble. But you can take with your queen, uh, sorry, you can take with your knight, and it seems like that black is actually done a whole rook for this position. But actually, black can now play bishop f5, and the huge bishops along these diagonals, the very active queen, the rook is about to join the party with rook d8 check, and the completely exposed white king is more than enough compensation for the rook, and actually the computer says that black is going to win this game. 
So knight takes f3 was a very good option from Rapport, but he actually missed this one. He played the other quite attractive move, which is knight d3 check. Again, the same idea, take on d4, and when you take it, there will be a double attack. And here, white has two ways to take back the, sorry, to take this knight. And here again, I invite you to stop the video and try to figure out which is the bad, better way to, to capture this knight. So actually, it, it's quite complicated. So the point is, if you take with your queen, which is the better option, then when black takes on d4, the usual double attack we have seen several times before, now we can take on g6, and if black takes on b2, that actually doesn't look that good because you just move your king, bishop takes g1, rook takes g1, and all of a sudden the black king is under quite some pressure, there is a threat of g takes s7 or maybe even g7, and also the black king is actually under quite some pressure. This is very good for, for, for white, and if you continue that bishop takes a certain... So here you take with your queen, bishop takes d4, h takes g6, and black doesn't take on b2 but just remove this rook immediately, then white has the option to take this d7 uh, bishop. And again, the white king is temporarily quite safe, but there's uh, an attack really going on against the black king. So this is again very, very advantageous for, for white. So for that reason, knight takes d3, the best option would be to take with the queen. But the opponent of Rapport played the move bishop takes d3. And after bishop takes d4, he uh, played the move, so now the rook is actually hanging, and he removed his rook from g1, he played rook g5. Here comes Rapport with bishop c6, so now both of these bishops are incredibly powerful, and uh, this is why turn now to, to attack, he sacrifices his rook with rook takes g6. Uh, Rapport has to take, takes back, now the bishop has to go back, you obviously can't play king h8 because that's just checkmate in one, so the bishop has to go back, and uh, comes queen h7 check. And after king f7, white has to decide how to continue. And here comes in play that Rapport is just a 10 year old boy, one of his first ever chess games, while the opponent is a 20 some years old uh, uh, old guy, also probably unrated at this point, but still, if you are so much older, you're supposed to win the chess game. So here, white's best option would be just to, to repeat and give this perpetual, but, uh, well, white wants to win. So instead of giving the perpetual, he plays bishop c4 check. And after e6, well, again, the best option for white is try to go for a, for a more or less drawish looking game and try to force a perpetual which line starts with bishop takes e6, and when the king takes back this queen g7, all of a sudden there is not much attack going against the white king, but the black rook can finally join, but sorry, the white rook can finally join the party, and this king in the center is pretty much exposed. So the computer says that there should be a perpetual sum after some moves, because the black cannot hide his king. Um, but after e6, uh, white still tries to force the for the issue and win and plays the move king g6, but after king g8, actually now the black king seems to be safe. There's not enough attacking power of white, there's only the queen and the bishop, and uh, the king seems to be running away for the corner and it seems alright. So now black is strongly threatening to take on b2, and white doesn't even take the e6 point, he plays the move bishop b3. And after queen takes e3, king b1, comes queen takes f3, and actually here we can see that black managed to consolidate, he has one more piece, the white attack doesn't seem to be strong enough, so black is winning. And actually white just finished the game by, by a horrible move, he played the move rook g1. And if you are a beginner here, I invite you to stop the, stop the video. Well, otherwise it's, uh, it's just back rank mate, so queen f1, and the game it was over. This is checkmate. Yeah, so this is the first ever chess game of Rapport in the databases. You could see that it was an incredibly complicated game as, as uh, all the other ones that were coming afterwards. Rapport started out the game by just flat out sacrificing an exchange here, and then he was even sacrificing a lot more pieces, and uh, even though white has good chances actually, at the end white, uh, well white refused the draw and just, just lost the game. So yeah, this was the, the first game of Rapport, and Rapport won this.
So if you are interested in this uh, first game series, you can also check out my previous videos. I did some games about uh, Magnus Carlsen himself, about his first game, but there are also games of Vichy Anand, Ali Reza, Firuja, um, who was the other? Oh, I also did uh, Kasparov. So if you like these games, then there's a lot of material you can check out on my channel.